can you tell me um, how aware you were of uh, of Stargate before uh, getting this this part of Kalma and Egeria? What attracted you to it, um, and uh, how that all came about? Well, I, I think it was at that point in my life, I was dividing my time between Los Angeles and Vancouver. I was sort of back and forth. Um, and to tell you the truth, I can't remember which city I auditioned in. Um, but uh, I mean, it's a fun show. It's a great show. And I think I just wanted to be on it. And this was this was post um, my you know, initial beginnings of of Star Trek. So I already was sort of familiar with the genre. And I'd I'd worked with Richard Dean Anderson just on one episode of MacGyver, but he's a great guy, so easy to work with. And um, I think it was, I cannot remember whether I had auditioned for earlier episodes and not got the part, which I know was the case with Star Trek. I auditioned a number of times and didn't land the role before I, I got the tour. But um, I think it was just, oh, here's a great gig on on a show um, in Vancouver, sure. Um, but I, I don't think I had a complete understanding of my character within the, uh, you know, the scale of the story of of uh, Stargate. And I know I would have seen the movie. I do remember seeing the movie with James Spader. So I I knew the original genesis of everything. But I think there were things that I that I didn't know. And I had forgotten until I watched it. Thank you again for sending me the link that, of course, they did that weird effect on our voice, on myself and Peter Stebbing's voice. So I was going, why do I sound like the first time I thought, is that me? And then I realized, oh, yes, of course, they did that to us. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a big part of, of distinguishing the uh, uh, the 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 gold and toker from everyone else. It's, it's just that little little tweak. And there's a whole story reason for why that that happened in the um, in the film. But the. Uh, it's one of those where we're watching this as an audience and we're like, oh, they've got a queen captive, you know, blah, 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 blah. So one angle of it is, is the the genetic experiment, the the experimentation on a species that really hates humanity. And so we really don't, part of us is like, oh, dang, you know, this, this creature is in jeopardy. And then it switches around and we find out that this is the mother of every one of this species that we have ever hold, held dear. Tell me about Egeria and finding that character uh, who has been in a, a, a tank for God knows how many decades and and tell me about finding that that's that space finding that fi finding that voice if you will I I was glad that there was a a benevolence to her that there was a and there is a sense of for lack of a better word royalty and and regalness to her and I, and you know, at the you know, this is my this is my final gift. This is my uh, to the. I really appreciated who she was and who she was trying to be, and I think that's just what I you know leaned into. There's some aspect of turning the other cheek that yeah. is is very and some a, an aspect of of imparting grace. That is that is really um, uh, what's the word that I want? Now I'm losing my words. Um, that, it, that it's it's so rewarding to see as a viewer. You know, we've we've been working with this species. They've been our allies for um, or this group. They've been our allies for for four or five years at this point. And the, then we encounter the person, the being who with, uh, who is has set up the architecture for everything that they believe in, and she has an opportunity you know once she gets out of confinement if she wanted to to completely uh blow this species to hell she could have burned everything to the ground and instead she reinforces everything that we believed in what the the tokra were that that this is a that this is a a, a person who chooses to uh give everyone regardless of what they have done to her and god knows over the years a second chance I think there's something that we that I relate to as an audience member about that. It's like, yeah, you know, I am capable of giving people a second chance. Well, I, I appreciate you using the phrase the imparting of grace. Uh I, I think that's wonderful. Cause yes, that I, I think that's exactly what she's doing. And and she was 
through the little genetic tweak that she was instilling in her offspring, she was trying to stop what inevitably happened. And she was unsuccessful at that. But um, yeah, it's, I played heavies, you know, uh, Bator is a heavy, but it was was nice to play, to play someone who, who had, who was interested in grace in a state of grace as, as you put it. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I love that episode. I love that you were in it. Um, and it was just, it was, it was a great casting decision as far as I'm concerned to, to bring you in there because you really imparted that in the five minutes that we have her, because in the scheme of things, you're not, we don't have, we're not with us for very long. It's one of those things that was like, I would have loved to have had her back, you know, resurrect her or something, but she used the sarcophagus, but she, they didn't believe in it. It was not, it was something that they believed was corruptible. And, the, and she was like, if this is my final gift. And then you're going to let me go. You're not going to resurrect me. I won't allow it. That's wild. Yes, she was. She was very generous, wasn't she? Yeah. She's what we would like our ruling right. bodies or or founding uh, parents to be. And frequently, sadly, they are not. No, but, uh, no they fall short. Yeah, it's it's aspirational, I think, um, the writing of Egeria. Thanks for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. You can find the full live stream shows on our YouTube channel or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule. See you on the other side.